like to welcome our first guest, Donna Lee. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, awesome. Well, this has been a couple months now. We've been bringing, you know, inventors from the wild, we call it. Uh, <laughs> they're not necessarily bold clients, but are, have been out there um, doing, making, inventing, and bringing products to the market. So thank you for your courage and being vulnerable to come up here. Sure. So walk us through what is it that you've invented? What is the Ariolo mat? So the Ariolo mat is a machine washable and machine dryable yoga mat that's non-PVC and they're sustainable. You're able to keep them clean. I've had my mat for four years. So um, yeah, I, I took a challenge on that, you know, there's no real mat out there like mine. And in inventing this, I um, chose to pursue a patent for it. So what was sort of the impetus, um, just sort of being fed up with kind of the, the thin, you know, not so supportive mat that we're all familiar with? That's some of it. Um, I was actually using the mats at my club and this was pre pandemic. And okay. I was alerted by another uh, club member not to use uh, the wipes to wipe down the mat. So what do you do? You've got kind of a conundrum, you know? Right. So I'm like, well, why can't I use the wipes? And she said, well, they're full of chemicals and they could be carcinogenic and you know, so kind of putting a little bit of fear in me. So I'm like, what do I do? And she's like, well, just go buy your own mat. You know, so I did. And that disintegrated within six months. And so I'm thinking. That's a lot of yoga. <laughs> you like I was doing it like six days a week and, you know, all that good stuff. So, and I probably bought not the best brand, but I realized that, you know, and I had a towel on my mat too. So I'm kind of got all these props to keep my and away from the mat itself and, you know, right. kind of improvising in a lot of ways. So I thought to myself, there must be something better out there, you know, and that's why I, I actually hired a patent researcher just Very to determine, yeah, yeah, so determine if there in fact was something like this. I kind of didn't want to take that on because that's quite a bit of work where you have to go and look at other patents and make a determination as to whether that kind of fits that model or product. And I, ju I just don't have the expertise in that. I don't think um, I would have been as successful. I would have found something and said, oh yeah, that sounds like my map. But I found that very helpful is if you have a product idea to kind of hire somebody that that's what they do. And they can go after, do the research and come back with you as to what's available and what's not. Got it. Well, that, I mean, that seems like, okay, so you've got a, it's a woven, it's a machine washable. I want to show it off. I've got your website. So this is the homepage of your website. So that's the mat right there. That we're that's looking correct. At, right? Yeah. So the, I'll tell you what it's made out of. It's kind of pretty simple. The top layer is Turkish towel, which is super absorbent and is also a type of cotton that doesn't promote bacteria or any kind of growth like that. So and that's why it's easy to kind of just maintain it and take care of it. There's a padding in the middle, which mm -hmm. two purposes for the padding is for comfort and also for manufacturing purposes, because it's the towel is fused to the padding. And then the bottom layer is a non-slip rubber that's non-PVC and they use it on sailboats. So it literally is like crazy. Oh, to the the is a, it's a, a non-stick or a non-slide. Yes. <laughs> non-slide rubber. Yeah. So we cool. just kind of put all three together and, you know, somebody recently said to me, so basically a towel married a mat. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> Looking at your patent here, uh, this was published. Well, it's a patent application. So it looks like you're still pending. Is that right? I got notification in December and then okay. I got my patent number in March. Oh, that's awesome. Well, congrats yeah. on that. Is that a, Thank a you. utility or design? I'm, it's a utility. Utility. It's cool. So, I mean... Yeah. That's incredible. So you're probably, are you happy with the way it ended up? Are you going to be filing overseas as well or just the U.S.? Um, well, right now my mat is made in the U.S., which is also important to me. And, you know, what I'm looking to do, which is kind of what I wanted to do from the start to now I, where I am now, is get the patent, get it validated that I do have a product and start doing some licensing, licensing agreements with some big players on the scene because right right now we're going into you know you see a lot of sustainability you see a lot of these big players turning into the 
you know, mindfulness, health and wellness. So um, they're doing some pivots there and I kind of want to capitalize on that. Looking back, how, how long you've been at this, like time-wise, how many years? I started this whole journey on January 1st, 2020. I filed for the patent, well, it's two and a half years. So 2020, 2021, September of 2021, I filed right. for the provisional patent and then I had it converted to the utility patent in 2022. So it took yeah. me two and a half years to get the, the actual patent, which from my understanding, that's fairly quick. It's not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, but I mean, so you've been at this for three, four years. And in that time period, yeah. if you're gonna, if someone was gonna start a, a different product, right? And they're looking for yeah. advice from you, what's, what's the one thing you would tell them, hey, I would do this differently or double down on this. What's some of your big advice there? My big advice in the patent area, I thought I could do this myself. And honestly, and I'm pretty good at figuring things out, but I realized I filed the provisional patent initially and I, uh, I messed it up <laughs> and it was something simple. Like I forgot to put a slash before my name and after my name. And it, okay. it immediately, I didn't get notified, but it immediately went into like a resting state. And I reached out to the patent office and then I found out that it was in, um, I forget the term, abandonment. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. And I was like, what happened? And, you know, I find out a simple thing, like I didn't put a slash before and after my name, which is indicative of your signature. Even yes. though I, my name was there, it still didn't count. I learned that lesson that, you know what, this is not my world. I need to kind of work with a patent attorney and they, you know, they'll just ask me questions and I'll answer the questions and they can do all the um, extra work. You know, my patent is about 37 pages. All right. Uh, yeah, for a, and for it, a yoga mat. My goodness, yoga mat. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love it. 